Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and in this video I'm covering some specs and pricing that was recently leaked about Ford's first fully electric SUV called the Mach-E. Two weeks ago we caught a glimpse of a heavily camouflaged Mach-E, compliments of inside EVs. And it was really our first look at this vehicle that Ford has been working on behind the scenes and will reveal on the 17th of November Though I won't be attending the event in person, I will be following this reveal very closely because this really represents Ford's first swing at a fully electric mass market vehicle and they're really their first fully electric SUV or what I think will probably fall into the CUV segment. It appears from these photos with the camouflage on it that it is a little bit of a smaller vehicle, maybe not as big as the Tesla Model X, the Audi e-tron and Jaguar I-Pace, probably is more fitting to compare to a Model Y, which is what we're going to do a little bit later on in this video. But first I wanna cover some of the specs that were leaked and this, th this is really, really exciting actually. So we're gonna start from most expensive to least expensive variant for the Mach-E. The first one, the GT comes in at 60,500. It's gonna have a range of 235 miles, zero to 60 of about three and a half seconds. It'll be all wheel drive standard have a 150 kilowatt charge rate and be available spring 2021. And then from there, it goes to the first edition, sitting just under $60,000 at a 270 mile range, a 5.5 zero to 60 standard all wheel drive, 150 kilowatt charge rate available late 2020. And then they've got this one variant called the California Route One sitting at just under 52,500 with a 300 mile range, which I was shocked to see. This will have a zero to 60 of two and a half seconds, standard all wheel drive, same 150 kilowatt charge rate early 2021 availability. And then from there, premium at $50,600, a 300 mile range, five and a half second, zero to 60. It'll have the option to choose rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, 150 kilowatt charge rate, and available late 2020. And then lastly, the Select will be the least expensive variant of the Mach-E, sitting at just under $44,000 with a 230 mile range of five and a half second, zero to 60. The option for all wheel drive or rear wheel drive, 150 kilowatt charge rate, and availability early 2021. And there's a few first impressions that I have when I look through some of these leaked photos. Number one, it definitely looks like a Ford. Two, it really does look like a sibling of the Mustang, a car that I always aspired to own as a teenager. And lastly, if these specs are accurate, this will be a very strong selling electric car for Ford. The Mach-E is gonna go really nicely head to head with the Model Y, which is going to be great competition, regardless of whether you like Tesla or not. Now, speaking of the Model Y, let's go ahead and compare the Mach-E to the Model Y to see how they fare head to head. The Model Y long range performance will come in at $60,000, have a range of 280 miles, a three and a half zero to 60 standard all wheel drive, at a 250 kilowatt charge right and be available probably mid 2020 according to the most recent Tesla earnings call. The next one is the long range all wheel drive coming in at $52,000, a 280 mile range, 4.80 to 60, standard all wheel drive, 250 kilowatt charge rate, and as well expected to be available mid 2020. And then lastly, the long range rear wheel drive coming in at $48,000, a 300 mile range of five and a half zero to 60, standard rear wheel drive, 250 kilowatt charge rate and be available likely late 2020 or maybe beginning of 20. 21. So it's clear that Ford is really positioning this vehicle to go head to head and compete with the Model Y in its class. And I think these really will be in a similar class in terms of size of vehicle. Now I know some of the hyper Tesla fans are probably thinking this Ford Mach-E doesn't have the Tesla supercharger network that the Model Y will, but Ford has already made a formal partnership with Electrify America, which is the fastest growing non-Tesla DC 
charging network in North America. So by the time this vehicle comes out, my guess is that there's going to be a pretty sufficient fast charging network that will allow Mach-E owners to travel freely from coast to coast, from west coast to east coast, and hopefully everywhere in between. That being said, I do have a few reservations about the Mach-E. The first one is, I hope my skepticism is wrong, but for the Ford to hit 300 miles right off the block with their first EV seems really challenging, especially knowing that no other automaker has a range of 300 miles or higher aside from Rivian, and they haven't even started producing their car yet. Also, the Mach-E does not appear to have a very small frontal mass. It's beefy, and it reminds me a lot of a more petite, less expensive Lamborghini Urus from the front. And it actually appears like it might be built off of the Ford Escape platform. It seems like it's got a similar size, and, and aside from the Mustang-esque styling on the front as well as the rear, it could double as a Ford Escape. The only reason why I bring this up is because sometimes when traditional automakers try and take an old platform that was really built for an internal combustion engine and make it electric, traditionally it has never worked out well in terms of range and efficiency. Gasoline cars just aren't designed for maximum efficiency. Though the Mach-E does not fit my personal styling and preference, if Ford can stick to the specs that were leaked in these screenshots, I think that the vehicle will sell extremely well, especially for people who don't want a Tesla or a Model Y. And yes, there are people who do have that strong of opinion about Tesla. And I think that's okay. The more options, the better. We have already seen with the Porsche Taycan how competition with the Model S has spurred Tesla to innovate and improve their vehicle. And this is exactly what we need. We need automakers to be vying for people's attention and money when it comes to automobiles. It is a very important part of the modern developed society to be able to get around. And if Tesla is the only electric vehicle automaker, it's not going to be very competitive. And I think that we need to have automakers that are trying to be the best and trying to beat each other because that's how innovation is spurred on. Sean Mitchell, All Things EV, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch everyone on the next video.